On well, last week's show, we went to Utah with the object of hunting moose. I got to go first because I've been wanting to kill a moose all my life. Ron kind of indifferent about it, but now he's all excited because he saw what I did. What's the plan here, Tyler? Well, what we're gonna do, the moose we're gonna hunt today are gonna be up on top, more than likely, and, uh, and we're just gonna glass each canyon as we go along, and that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna go sit on that pond. And then we will go sit on that pond and wait for one to come over in water. That sounds good. My gun is two inches high at 100. Okay, good, let's go. Good shot, hit him again, hit him again. Foot above his back, hold on, there he goes. How about that? Woo! Golly, I don't know how I could have had a better time than I had today. So thanks again, guys, I appreciate it. Good season. Thank you. Any day in the woods with a firearm in your hands is better than a, a day behind the desk. Jerry, if it looks like I'm gonna get gored, put around in me, would you? <laughs> I was thinking if they come at this, I'm gonna trip you. <laughs> How can you have all these hills without valleys, huh? Nice shot. Good bird. Oh, look at that now. I want you to come out in your loincloth and me with a rifle. I'll think it's a white bear. In the Woods with Ron and Jerry is brought to you by Envirologic of Alabama, products that make sense for you and your environment. By Landis International. There is no substitute for perfection. By NPP Incorporated, flying Ron and Jerry to the next day in the woods. By the 500 Magnum Energy Bar, power for now, power for later. And by Karma LLC, an elevated state of awareness. Well, the next morning after I got my moose, we got up early and we started glassing. Now, Ron was after a moose, but he also had a mule deer tag, so if we had an opportunity to take a nice mule deer, he was gonna do it. And at this point, I was ready to shoot. It could be a mule deer, could have been a moose, could have been a partridge, I was ready. He'd been following me for two and a half days and it was his turn to shoot, so he was ready to go. Get out of here. In the shade. Doesn't seem to be nervous. We started glassing, and again, we started riding and walking, just like before. And it was walking your turn. Walking and riding. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyhow, Tyler started spotting some moose, so uh, we, had, we were pretty excited, but we never saw anything that, that, that was big enough at first. We drove around all day, we glassed, we got out and walked a little bit in glass. We wound up on the same ridge where I killed my moose, and there was a beautiful mule deer. And you were sitting in the spot that I sat in when I shot my moose over to the left, and this mule deer was straight out in front about 600 yards away. I don't think, I don't think we were 50 feet away from where you shot. So anyhow, you set up for a shot. He's at the base of the pine tree, just lower left. Right there. He's right there, brought that. No, I'm not on it. You got it? Okay. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, he's good. On this trip, Ron is using his Weatherby Mark V Alaskan that he purchased new in 2006. Chambered in 300 Weatherby Magnum, Ron uses the 180 green boat tail soft point bullet from Weatherby. On his Weatherby, Ron uses a Z3 Swarovski optic scope with ballistic turret.
When Ron was set up on a mule deer at 600 yards, it's a long shot. Yeah, this would be the longest shot that I've ever taken in my life. Well, you know what? You got a steady hand, though. Ron, you need help finding him? No, oh, I've got him. OK. Did him? OK, Ron? You have him, Ron? I would get steady, just really get steady, and then Tyler would say, wait. are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> then he would say, wait. Are you ready? And I finally had to just stop and say, shh. I don't think I said shh, but I got the point across because I'm not one of these guys that can shoot a pie plate at, a, at, at 600 yards with people talking around me, but it got quiet and I got ready. He got him, he hit him, he hit him. He hit him, hold on, watch him. You got him? Okay, there he is, Yeah, hold I'm on. on him, he's going down. He's gonna crash any second, man. He's hit hard. And... Down. Down. Keep the scope on him. I haven't even found him again. Watch him, he's still tumbling. He's dead. He's dead, he's dead, I got him. He's dead, good shooting. That was one hell of a shot, a little over 600 yards. Uh, I just went down on the fourth bar on this uh, Swarsky Scope uh, 300 Weatherby Magnum, and I still can't see the deer this down, but, uh, but my guide, uh, Tyler Scott, and our uh, Tyron guy, uh, uh, Ty McFarland, say that he went down and he's dead as hell. So uh, I'm just gonna have to take their word for it. What do you think, Bob? Great shot, bud, great shot. Thank you. I don't think we need to hunt in the morning anymore. Let's just come, let's just hunt the evening. That's generally the, the best luck we've had. Well, I, I figure, you know, I figure we like to do things Thank in the you. dark. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very yeah, much. That was fun, that was a good shot. Thanks, Ty. I, I would love to. That's a hell of a shot, right? I would have to put a mess down. Pile up dead in the door right there. Look, there are two of them fighting. No more close I, shots I, for Ron, you guys. <laughs> hey, if it's not 250 plus, Ron can't. I totally agree. I totally agree. That's a smoker. Yeah, he, he, yeah he's a good buck. He's a good buck. He's, he's probably 25, 26. Down here. I know, for a good fight. This is the deer that Ron shot right before dark. Uh, Beautiful mule deer. Uh, Ron would have loved to come down here to help us retrieve it, but he's got these two artificial knees and can't make it up this mountain. I'm not sure I get back out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get here for the pictures at least. Uh, Tyler, you want to talk about the shot real quick? Yeah, it was uh, just the 600 yards, and we got Ron set up, and uh, his 300 Weatherby made a good shot, and here we are around 9,000 feet, Utah. Uh, it's a good Utah buck. You can't beat that. Well, we thank you and J and J Outfitters. It was a great hunt. And thank you, Mitch, and thank you, Ty, for the great camera work and the hard work y'all put in on this hunt. Moose and mule deer in Utah, you can't beat it. It's Thursday morning, I hunt in Saturday evening, and Ron still hadn't had a chance at a moose. We had a plan, and Tyler had a plan. We moved to another ridge where they had seen moose earlier, and we, we were pretty hopeful at that point. This is a nice gun. When I grow up, I want to own one just like it. I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm playing the part of Gunga Din. You know, I'm right. bearing the gun. Pull that down. So Captain Ron Landis. Tyler Scott might be in the top five worst drivers I've ever ridden with. Uh, <laughs> I think he's maybe top two. We rode in some narrow little trails that you wouldn't take a dirt bike on in his vehicle, which we found out later was not his vehicle. Yeah, it was his wife's car. Well, he messed it up to a point where I'm pretty sure he had to get her another car by the time that was over with the scratches on it and all the, all the rough roads we went on. And it was scary. We went down some roads where, you know, I was sitting there calculating how many times we'd roll over before we hit the bottom. And somebody said, well, don't worry about dying in the crash. You're gonna die in the fire on the way down anyhow. <laughs> so, well, you know, Tyler Watson helped us find my moves. We happened on him on the, on the ranch. As we were riding along, we happened on another 
J and J guide Ricky Bangeter, and Ricky said he could help us look for a moose for you. Man, you're rally this thing all over the place. Yeah, we're gonna buy a new. Yeah, we've been over. Home. We've been way over on the down off of the off the ridge. You know that North Ridge. She's gonna off like a new vehicle. I guarantee you. We've been off the trail. And yeah, that's that's pretty salt. tight, isn't it? In a couple yeah, we, places. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. tight. No, <laughs> it's a two-wheeler trail. Up. You know, by the trail. by the signs of these Rocky Mountain pinstripes, I'd say it's a little tight. Rocky Mountain pinstripes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wax it a it's little a bit. It's a dirt bike trail we've been on. Is that white spot? Oh, he's got horns. Huh? That upper one's got horns. Take a look. I do see the moose. How long would it take to get there? Twenty minutes? No, it'd take an hour. Really? Yeah, because we got to go all the way down, all the way up, all the way up, and all the way over. They'll be there in the morning. The you know, best case scenario, Ron, is finding them and know right where to go yeah. for them in the morning because they ain't going to be far from right yeah. there. Well, I can sure as say I'll see them with these glasses. Hell yeah. Well, there's our game plan for the morning. Should we head in for the night? <laughs> see what else we see on the way back? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. As the sun rises on the next to the last day of my hunt, we're still looking for a moose. Well, we'd found one the evening before and we knew where he went to bed. So we went back to that spot in the morning to see if we could locate him. We've got two cows just down here. Are these we, both uh, cows or is that a cow and a calf? Cow and a calf. Do you um, think these were the two ca uh, cows that were with that bull last night? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, there was, I knew the one, the first one was a bull. But we couldn't tell about the second one, so we'll just look this area over real good. And, so uh, in all see probabilities, he's here somewhere. He should be here somewhere, but it's a, it's a warm morning, so more than likely he's probably bedded down. Nothing's really moving this morning. Yeah, right now we're just trying to locate a possible bedded. I mean, right now the, the moose are pretty much going to be bedded. To be honest with you, the, our only our best chances of of getting one spotted right now would be at a bed change because oftentimes during the day they'll they'll bed down and as, as the sun changes positions, they'll uh, the the sun will hit their coats and they'll get heated up and so they'll stand up, move around, stretch their legs, and then sit back down. So it might only be you know a couple minutes max. Um, but we're just hoping they're looking in the right place when that happens so we can get one located. As the sun sets on the last day of our hunt, we've done nothing but glass and walk and drive and glass and walk and drive. Still no moose for Ron. He's out now, isn't he? Plain view. This is encouraging because all of them are going to behave the same. So uh, even though what we found isn't what we're looking for, the fact that we've got three of them out here on the hill is a very positive start to this, our final day, the day of the day of reckoning, the day when we know we win or lose, the day we know whether nature prevails or Ron prevails. It's the last morning. Jed showed up and he brought Ricky with him and they were looking for a moose for Ryan. Somewhere out there in this forest of trees, there's a moose and Ricky's the one that spots it. Now that we know where the moose is, Jed takes me to a spot where I can get a good shot. Find this, find my spot and scope right by the edge of the quakey. It's right there. Yeah. Just to set up on him, get the range, get everything figured out. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, see if you can see, get some right there. Okay, this way right there, he's right there. Tyler helps Ron find a stable rest. Then he and Jed brush out a shooting lane. Ricky Bangler of J&J Outfitters uh, came out here this morning along with uh, Jed's family. They're out here all helping to try and find us a moose on this last day of our moose hunt. Uh, Ricky's got good eyes and found this one essentially buried. I can barely see him myself. He's out there just a little over 300 yards. So I think that we'll uh, be able to get a good shot on him when he stands up. Now we're just gonna be patient. 400. Your 400 mark. 400. A little on the second mark. Just barely below his midsection. Now that's not it. He's up. Oh, yeah, you don't have a shot, Ron. You don't have a shot. You stand right at us, you don't have a shot. I don't think he should shoot now, Ron. He's behind a tree. Uh -huh, I see. I know, but I don't, he don't have a shot now. We probably need to move up the hill so we can get a, a different angle. Give me an angle and I can get up. We've been looking for a moose for Ron for three days. We've got one spotted at 400 yards. Now the only question is, am I gonna be able to make the shot? <sighs> He's at 380, same situation. Just that 400 yard mark, just attached while he's cornering away. Yep, yeah, got him. Got him? Fire no. You good? Nah, I don't know. I think he smoked him. Hold on, Ron. Hold I'm on. I'm just holding. I'm holding, but I'm holding on him. That's fine. 400 yard yard mark. I think he hit him. He's acting. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, I think he hit him. There you go, Ron. Got him that time. Huh? Hit him again. Hit him again. Hit him again right there. Yeah, you got him good that time. He's going down. Hold on, watch him, watch him, watch him. Tyler, thank you very much. It's been a long week for you, I know that. You're Ricky, welcome. thank you time. for finding the bull. We've been glassing all week and you came out here with your magic eyes. Yeah. Jerry, you got yours a lot earlier yeah, than I early. did. But, uh, well, Ron, you, uh, you finally saw a bull moose that you could shoot yeah. and uh, you made a good shot on the uh, third shot. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was an okay shot. The second one, I don't know about. The third one is the one that put him down, I'm sure. Well, thanks a lot, Jerry. I, pre great, I appreciate it very much. Great job. We've been here with J&J uh, &J Outfitters in Utah for, what, seven days tomorrow? It's a week, yeah. A week. We've yeah. been looking for this bull for a week. Yeah, we had uh, a good time here. We got two nice bulls. Uh, I've been mainly walking around helping spot for the last four days since I got mine last Tuesday, but... We've got two good bulls and it's a great time and, and uh, really enjoyed it. Now the work begins. Now the work begins. We need to get out of the way. Thanks again, Jerry.
with you. We've spent the last seven days with J&J Outfitters in Utah. We had a great time. We each got a moose, and we couldn't have had a better time than that. I have learned how to glass and walk. Well, that's great. That's great. But watch us next week on In the Woods with Ron and Jerry. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. In the Woods with Ron and Jerry is brought to you by Envirologic of Alabama, products that make sense for you and your environment. By Landis International. There is no substitute for perfection. By NPP Incorporated, flying Ron and Jerry to the next day in the woods. By the 500 Magnum Energy Bar, power for now, power for later. And by Karma LLC, an elevated state of awareness.